Hi all, I'm Nana. Hope you're all doing good and staying safe. In today's video, we're going to discuss about another interesting topic called Salesforce Service. Service is an in our Salesforce product which is used to capture feedback of any product or service in order to understand the areas of improvement. Before the launch of Salesforce Service, organizations were leveraging different tools like Get Feedback or Survey Monkey, which then needs to be integrated with Salesforce application in order to generate service. With Salesforce service, there is no need, no need of any such integration as we can easily build, design, and send meaningful service right from the Salesforce application itself. Talking about the business use case, service is used to capture customer satisfaction, which we shortly call it as CSAT. So without any further ado, let me jump into my developer org and from setup, from quick find, I will look for survey settings and see whether if it is enabled or disabled. As I have already enabled, that's the reason you see it as enabled. Otherwise, in a brand new org, you have to explicitly enable service in order to turn on survey feature for your org. Uh, the rest of the features, the second uh, committee and survey owner part, I'll be talking in later half of the session. Okay, now that we have enabled the surveys, let's go back and see how do we create a brand new survey. So from app launcher, I will look for service tab. So this is how I go to my service tab and click on this. It takes me to this page where you can see all the existing surveys. And just in case if you're not able to find survey tab, make sure to go back and check your profile and see whether services is default on. So this is something you will find it under tab settings. Under tab settings, make sure you change or re-verify if service is default on or whether it is off. So this is how you can make the tab visible. Once this is done, once you are able to navigate to your survey page, survey page or if it is a new org, you will not see any service, you have to click on new in order to create a new survey. And when I click on new, it takes me to the survey builder page. And then I have to name my survey uh, with any random name of uh, your business, uh, whatever the business use cases, accordingly you can name the survey. So what I'll do is I'll not create a new survey, rather I will use one of the existing survey, SMDC one stop uh, feedback and open the latest version. When I open the latest version, it takes me to the survey builder page and since it is already activated, that's the reason I am in view, view mode. In order to make any ch changes to this survey, there are two options. I can create a new version in order to make customization to the existing survey or make a new copy altogether, which means you are creating a different survey. But I don't want to create a new copy, new survey. I would like to enhance on top of this. So that's the reason I will go with create new version. So it says you are creating a new version based on version four. On the top uh, left corner, you will see which version you are at. It's version four. I will go ahead and click on yes. It takes me to the version five of this particular. So, so it's version six. Earlier it was version five. Okay, so it takes me to the version six. And this is the latest version, the new version which we created. And you see there is welcome page. Welcome page is used to in is used to educate the users what the intent of the survey is. You can either enable or you can disable the uh, welcome page. So if you have to enable, you, if you have to disable, you have to click on this eye icon. If you have to enable, turn it on. Okay, this is all about welcome page. And next one is you can create n number of pages for which you just click on uh, add page. I don't want page four, so I'll go with the existing pages. and. Uh, in page one, you would see different questions. So I will, what I'll do is I don't want this many questions. So I will just go ahead and delete few and create one more. Okay, let me delete this question. So how is the Salesforce content? So basically there are two questions. How do you, have you subscribed my channel? Okay. 
So there are basically three questions, right? Okay. There is something called as display display logic as well. Uh, you would see this question displayed only when it is greater than or equal to four. How is the Salesforce content in our YouTube channel? If I am marking this as four or five, only then you would see this particular question to be displayed. This particular question that is the intent of display logic. But when you wanted to display this question based on any logic, if yes, just go ahead and write your logic. For this, uh, there is no display logic that I have implemented, so that is fine. So right now there are three questions. How do you rate the content of the? Okay, let me go ahead and uh, create a new question on page two. So this is my page two. So what I would do is I will click on add question here, and I would say I'll go with pick list one, and I will say. Which is the video that you liked most? Okay, since it is pick uh, pick list question that I have selected, let me go ahead and delete this, and I'll talk about the different type of questions that you can go with. There are different types: date, like or dislike, long text, pick list, net promoter score. You can choose any question of your choice. For demo purpose, I will go with pick list, and the question would be: Would you be uh, promoting? Uh, would you be sharing the videos of the YouTube channel? your colleagues and uh, the simple answer is yes and the other one is no i'll just uh, this is how i'm creating a new question maybe i wanted to order my question so i'll go with the up arrow and down arrow this is meant to order your question and just in case if i have to make the question as required i will go with this uh, gear icon and make it as required would you be sharing the videos of the youtube I'll not make it as required, but just in case, if you want to do that, you can go with this. And now this is all about uh, creating different pages, different questions, and how do you order the uh, order the question, how you wanted to display the order of questions. So that is something you can implement it. And there's something called as page branching logic. I'll create, delete the existing rules and we'll create a new rule. And maybe what I'll do is, I will not create page branching logic for page one. I will, in fact, create for page two. The page two, I'll just wanted to go to page three. Uh, let me go, to, go directly to page three. Uh, thank you, page. And the display logic would be if somebody answers as, have you, what are the topics? Would you be, okay. Have you subscribed my channel? If somebody answers as yes, I want to directly jump to thank you page. So this is a logic that I have implemented. Page branching logic is basically you're branching the different pages. From page one, you directly wanted to jump to thank you page or whether it should be page three, how the redirection should be, all that is implemented in the page branching logic. So we have implemented page branching logic only for page two. And thank you page, it's like we always prefer and recommend thank you, thanking the users who are taking their time to fill the survey. So this is a thank you page which cannot be disabled. So next comes the branding part where you can choose few of the options. If you want your, if you want the users to see how much percentage of the survey is completed, let's say there are 10 questions that they are filling, five questions, 50 percentage survey is completed. That is what progress bar indicates. So I would recommend turning it on. It is again optional. Auto progress is basically you want it to automatically progress to different pages as the name indicates. And if you wanted to change the background image, you can go with this. If you wanted to uh, apply different styles for different questions and answers or buttons, you can go and do that in branding page. So this is all about how do you build a new survey. I will click on preview if you wanted to. You can click on preview if you wanted to see how the output looks like. But for today's demo, I'll directly click on activate and we'll see how do we send the survey. 
So build part is completed. Once you activate it, uh, since we cannot uh, make any customization once you activate, that's the reason build is converted to view. Basically, this survey is only in view mode. And if you want to create a new survey, the same uh, logic, whether you can go with uh, creating a new version or create, make a copy of the existing one. So for uh, in order to, we are done with survey uh, invitation. We have created the survey invitation. Now we'll generate the survey invitation. We'll send the survey invitation. And there are two ways. One, using link. And even for this, you are, you would see there are two different links which has been generated for participants in your company, participants outside your company, who doesn't have Salesforce account. Since I'm saying like I want to generate a link for participants outside my company, which means uh, who doesn't have any Salesforce account, I don't want them to be authenticated, unauthenticated users should be able to fill this survey, then I would go with this option. If I want authenticated users, I'll go with this option. And where you can also define expiry date for your survey. And you can also choose the other options like uh, let's participants see their responses or an anonymized response. You don't want it to see who the response you are, who the response, who the respondent is. You can go with the anonymized responses. You can also download QR code and you can copy the link and share it to the users who wanted to fill the survey in different other channels. It could be email, SMS, or any other channel of your choice. Now, this is very important. This will be populated only when you choose a community here. If you do not choose the community, that particular link will not be generated. And you can choose any community of your choice, any template, it doesn't matter. But we need a community to be chosen here just to generate the link over here. This link will be only generated when you select the community. If you make it as none, that particular option would be grayed out, which means participants outside your company will not be able to fill the survey who doesn't have Salesforce account. So this is all about this. Survey owners can manage responses. This we will discuss in the next section where we'll talk about the analyze part. For today's session, I wanted to limit the discussion to build and send fees. And the other important aspect since the so participants doesn't have access to Salesforce account, we, are, we call them as guest users. So make sure that the guest user profile has this permissions enabled. They should be able to view the survey, so read access should be given. They should be able to view the invitation, so read access should be given. And they should be fill the survey. They should be able to submit the response. Then you have to enable create access for this particular object called as survey responses. Primarily, there are three important objects, surveys, survey builder page, create and publish your survey. So that is surveys object. Survey invitation is nothing but, uh, it's like that is the object using which you are creating the invitation. The build phase that we were demonstrating earlier, we were able to build the survey because I have the create access to the survey invitation object. And I can only submit the response if I have create uh, access to this particular object. So these are the three primary objects which I have to provide uh, relevant access for the guest user committee profile. So now that we understood when this long link uh, will be generated, let's go back and see what is the other option is. The other option is send email. So using the send email option, I can either choose a link or I can uh, choose any question of my choice. I'll just go with one question. How is the Salesforce content? And I'll go and hit next. There are two options. You can send email directly to individual by entering their email address, or you can send it to the list. Uh, I mean, list of recipients on different particular objects. It could be contact list, lead list, or campaign member list. Right now, this feature is limited to these three objects. And the maximum participant list would be 3,000. And this is a new feature which was introduced in the last release, which was summer 21. So let us go ahead and click on send to list and you have to choose an object. For today's demo, I wanted to go with lead object. And the list view is, I'll go with the today's leads. And the recipient would be, I wanted to send an email to the lead record itself. So I'll go with lead ID. You can, this is not mandatory. I'll still want it to associate to the lead record. And I'll click on next. And then 
from from address the email address is populated uh, this is my logged in user i have logged in with this email address and the other one is my pop is being populated from the org wide email address so this is my org wide email address you see i have selected one other email here and this is the display name and nana support so this is how you can populate in different emails all you have to do is make sure that you are populating in org wide organization wide address so two under two you cannot add the multiple list views you have to go with one list view and this is a list view so basically leads this is my list view having only one record maximum records is 3000 for demo purpose i just uh, wanted to go with one record so this is a new feature and i will say i just change the subject list view it's a basic one stop I will click on send and let's see how the survey output looks like. And over here, you, you can again select different options whether the link should be unique or you want it to anonymize responses, you want to define an expiry date. All of this, you can make the relevant settings here. I'll click on send. So, in today's session, we discussed about how do you build the survey, how do you view your existing survey, and how do you send the survey. Analyze is something we will discuss in the next session. And objects as well, we have discussed three primary objects, survey, survey invitation, and uh, survey response. So this is the survey email. And now let me respond to this survey. I will answer as five star. Let me five star. It takes me to the survey page where the first page would be a welcome page where I'm letting the users know why the survey is being captured. You see, this is the auto progress part. You see 33.33% .33 of surveys completed. This is the significance of this particular um, auto progress. I will go with 10. And there was also apart from auto progress um, there is also progress bar this is the progress bar and auto progresses it directly has taken me to the next page i will say would you be promoting the videos yes i would like to promote will you subscribe to the channel and okay this is where the audio promote as a dc one-stop channel it says i will say yes and it takes me to the thank you page so this is where I have implemented page branching logic, if you remember. So and this is a thank you page. Once I'm done with thank you page, that's it. The survey response would be captured under survey response object. So in today's session, what we have uh, covered is how do you generate email surveys through Survey Builder? And in the next session, we'll be discussing how do we generate surveys using process builder or flows based on some business criteria. You can also generate survey invitation directly from contact record, lead record, or person account record. Or you would also want it to generate surveys whenever a support case is closed. And that is something you can do it through support settings. You have to enable your service by navigating to support settings. So this is something we'll discuss in the next sessions. And also we were only focusing on email service as that is something available in demo org. But if you are interested to generate service from different uh, digital engagement channels like WhatsApp, Facebook, Messenger, Messenger or through SMS, you will need to purchase the advanced uh, survey feature license Salesforce Feedback Management. And in today's session, we were talking about the three primary objects. And when I talk about survey response for any org, you will have a limit of free 300 responses. And if you are looking for additional limit, you would have to talk to your account executive. It comes with additional cost. In next session, we'll talk about the remaining other objects and which are the objects which you can customize through Object Manager in Lightning. So thank you so much for watching all our videos in our YouTube channel. If you would like to be notified of the next video, please do subscribe. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.